So, getting to the moon. Well, we have MechJeb, and if you have limited functionality of MechJeb due to being in career mode, this is going to be a little bit difficult. But let's talk about the custom window editor. Uh, that will give you the ability to add different windows here. Uh, the ones we want are orbit, and we've got to change these in a sec. Rendezvous, they've got too much stuff in. Rendezvous I usually put up here. Surface, down here, and vessel info I usually put down here. And what we want to do is click this overlay, so it makes it look like this without the border. And you can also make it compact, which used to do something, but in this case doesn't. It used to squish the lettering together a little bit more. And then you can make the background lighter so that you can see what's behind it. And so we'll want to do that for each of them. Okay, so what you want in each window may vary. For the rendezvous window, uh, time to closest approach, closest approach distance, relative velocity at closest approach is good. Distance to target is important, relative velocity. Um, you might not need the relative velocity at closest approach. Relative inclination is important. Phase angle to target, I generally don't use, and synodic period I don't use. Uh, what we're going to want is, for the moon in particular right now, time to ascending and descending node, which is when we'll be crossing the moon's orbit, and that's the time when we want to launch. And then sometimes I'd want heading to target. Uh, so I'll cut some of this other stuff out so it's not so much. Mm. Relative velocity at close approach, we'll just look at the map for. I think that'll be fine. So that's pretty much what I normally have. Uh, for orbit info, we have a lot of the other stuff around here, like the orbital speed we can see on the dial. So I don't need the orbital speed. Apoapsis and periapsis is in here, uh, but it's sometimes inconvenient to jump to it. I don't need the time to periapsis during launch. I don't need the semi-major axis. Our inclination is sort of helpful. Uh, for some of the missions in career mode, eccentricity is important. Longitude of ascending node sometimes, but the other three uh, we don't need. I don't even know why relative inclination would be in orbit. It should be in rendezvous. Uh, so that's orbit. And then let's go to vessel info. Vessel info, we want our delta V stuff. So max acceleration, Conrad acceleration might be better. Uh, max thrust, it depends on you. We'll skip that for now. Vessel mass is always interesting. Surface thrust weight ratio, no, no. And then vessel, I want the stage, delta V, atmospheric, and vacuum. So it shows both on the same line. And then I also want the total delta V. And I want the stage time as well. Stage time, you can decide whether you want full throttle or current throttle. I'll put full throttle. And just think about it so okay so those are our vessel info stats and then finally the surface stats that's for landing so you don't need to display it any other time and we need to think about what we want for landing uh, the true altitude is I mean of course we can click up there so but it's nice to have a second read on that the surface speed and vertical speed um, seems to be the same right now so vertical speed and surface horizontal speed is what we want coordinates and current biome seem good and i don't think i have enough transparency there all right so those that's how i normally configure my windows otherwise it gets too cluttery too so it's not nice to have a whole lot of windows blocking your rocket and these are the standard things that i would go with and some, i'll also have mechjeb's uh smart ass system over here and that's how we'll control the rocket this time so going to the moon this might be a leap in what we should be doing but uh we don't need to be in the map view for this we'll have the relative inclination if you're launching from cape canaveral which is default uh you can get to 0 0.25 degrees and if you're launching from somewhere else you'll need to keep an eye on the ascending and descending node and when that gets closer to like 10 minutes or something like that and counting down then pay attention to hang to target uh, you might have to subtract 180 from the heading to target in order for it to make sense but 
from Cape Canaveral you can go straight out 90 degrees. So here you can see the relative inclination is 8.5. Unfortunately, we're launching in the dark. I thought it was, where are we anyway? <laughs> uh, I thought we were going to get to less inclination, but apparently not. Okay, fine. I missed it. Uh, so, do they have more inclination for the moon these days, or am I at the wrong place? But it's fine. 2.55 is fine. Anything under 10, I think I can correct. So, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. The plume seems to be in the wrongish place, and as expected, our thrust weight ratio is horrible. So, surface, surface. This is fine. So, I'll just click this. It's not necessarily a good idea to click Smart AS, uh, to try and do this too fast. It does like to get wobbly sometimes. And actually, we probably don't want to do that too soon because of our thrust weight ratio. Attitude adjustment uh, gives you the option for using different controllers with Smart ASS, and generally we use hybrid controller instead of the better controller. So I'll use that. But that will also give you the ability to change how how quickly it stops itself. And when you've got like weak RCS thrusters and stuff like that controlling it, you might want to increase that so it doesn't constantly try and stop itself. The general arc that you take on launch in realism overhaul compared to stock is about the same. Uh, so if you know how to make a nice launch in stock, it's, it's not too different. You could probably go with what you are familiar with because the atmosphere is actually pretty similar. It just ends at 140 kilometers rather than 70. But that end part is thin, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Now our relative inclination is getting away from us, so I'm going to also add some heading to this. In stock you might get to 45 degrees at 15 kilometers. We probably ought to aim for that a little bit higher, maybe 20 to 24 kilometers. No, oh, it seems like we have more relative inclination than I thought. Oh, we're not launching from Cape Canaveral. This is 26 degrees, that's why I'm thrown off. We're launching from Boca Chica. Why are we launching from Boca Chica? <laughs> Normally we would launch from Cape Canaveral. But... Okay, so that's why we've got the 2.4 degrees. Sometimes for the upper stage ignition you might want separatrons of some kind. And that's to make sure that you can ignite the upper stage or you could use hot staging as they do out of Boca Chica. Normally I would also go for about two minutes time to apoapsis for the first stage to give you a second stage enough time. It depends on how long the second stage is. Let's see how this goes. For some reason all my plumes are in the wrong place. I guess they don't look at the stock plumes very much. At 100 kilometers it's fine to separate the fairings. If you want to be daring, 80 kilometers is okay. If you want to be safe, do it in space. Generally though, the most important thing is to do it as at low thrust to weight ratio, so with the lowest g-forces, and so right when you ignite the second stage is the safest as far as g-forces are concerned. We'll just keep the pitch up because we don't have that much time to apoapsis. And Alpha's warp. We are in space now. We're going down a bit, so I'll pitch up more. Probably should have had more time to apoapsis. It'll probably be okay. Not super efficient though. There's Florida, where I should have been launching out of. Unfortunately it's at night. Somebody had a problem with the atmosphere, and since we launched at night I couldn't check that out. I'll try and check that out later on, where it is an atmosphere problem with Scatterer in this version. Well, we're a little bit short compared to what I wanted to have, but because we have infinite ignitions on these engines up here, I think I can compensate for it and still do the mission. The thrust weight ratio of the first stage and this stage was just too low. Okay, go. RCS on. These do not gimbal, so we need the RCS. 
So these won't have enough to complete the transfer, but we'll just use the next stage for that. I think I'll take that for now, even though the periapsis is in the atmosphere. I think we should be able to transfer... We could probably have just gone straight. <laughs> um, uh, but the way it is, we'll probably need to lift that periapsis. So over here, we can use Orbit Prograde. Again, infinite ignitions are nice. Ignition. Okay. So now, well, we could do an off-plane transfer though, but I think 2.5 degrees is okay and we don't have to panic about it. Normal sort of thing is for the moon to cover about 45 degrees of its orbit by the time we get there. So, like that. And we can see that they, even with the 2.5 degree inclination difference, we can get there. And definitely focus view and see how we can optimize this. Maneuver node editor is handy here. So you don't have to use that dialog either. I mean, it preceded that dialog after all. So here we clearly see that we have the inclination problem. And maybe timing, changing the timing of our burn will help, but I think I'll take that and do a mid-course correction. We do want to land, so we have to get closer. The RCS is doing way too much. And I would like to be on the daylight side, since I don't have to worry about comms especially. Okay, so just like that, we'll be fine. It's getting there a little bit fast. Maybe I won't make it. I should have some suspense here. Okay, so the RCS isn't constantly going. We are recharging. All right, and if you see your icons over here go red, You'll have to sell the fuel down first, and so with the RCS thrusters, press H. In this case, they're not red. And pressure-fed engines, I don't know if they go red this time, these days, but they used to. So yeah, you may or may not need to do that. One quote-unquote feature they've added to realism overhaul is that the engines have a slight imbalance of thrust. So you can see this one is 4.4-ish, this one 4.3-ish, this one closer to 4.5-ish, and that's why the RCS thrusters are constantly being used, because they're trying to balance that and these don't gimbal. That's also why I tilted them a little bit to sort of help it out a little bit, so it's not doing too much damage, but it's still doing some damage and requiring some RCS to keep things stable. If we take a look here, yeah, it's not that much sounds worse than it is. Okay, right. And remember, there's some residuals left in the tank because the engines couldn't use all of it. It was to the tune of about 3%, 3.5%. But the RCS can use that, but we don't want to waste time with that, so... You'll notice less RCS puffing from this and that's because it's just one engine and less imbalance. So when I estimated the landing for the moon, I said 2,600 meters per second. Actually, the very minimum that you can use is about 1,800, but it's tough to do that. And for beginners, I wouldn't recommend trying, uh, but the 2,600 is more for a targeted landing. And in this case, we're using some of this for this burn because our launcher was a little bit insufficient and we're going to need about 80 more meters per second for the mid-course correction. So that's going to cut into that, but I still think we have enough for landing because even if you take this out, that's about 200 and another 100 for mid-course correction. That's 300 less. That brings us to 2,300. Still, it's possible. I mean, in fact, that's reasonable. It's We're not trying to do a targeted landing in this case. So yeah, we should be okay still. And stop. So we can finish up the rest with RCS, but 
Uh, we're doing some inclination correction with that mid-course adjustment. We just want to get this directly over the moon, we find. Okay, and then let's adjust the mid-course correction. Uh, okay, time to use the maneuver node editor. Of course, we could use the dialog down there too. Okay, so that will be our correction, and then we need to capture. Um, you could try to land directly, like you could aim for an impact on the moon and then try to burn at the last minute, but it's tough to judge that properly. So getting into orbit first is usually better, unless you're very familiar with how to do the direct approach. That said, a lot of the probes in the early days did the direct approach. So it's got to take 941 meters per second to capture. That's also more than I expected, and that's because we're getting there too quickly. So I should have left more distance between us and the moon initially. Um, this is not 45 degrees. That's like 30 degrees. We went there too fast. So the faster you go, it, it doesn't cost a whole lot more up front, as we actually need to make sure to point at the sun here. So if the solar panels are on top, it's sun, oops, no force roll, down. Then just for show, I should extend this commutatron. There's Earth. Um, yeah, so getting to the moon faster won't seem like a lot initially on the initial burn. Oh, and it's got to deviate from the sun, so we'll do a little furl here to keep it stable. Uh, won't seem like a lot initially, but once you get there, it's going to cost a lot more to capture. So that's the problem with getting there too quickly. So I'm really cutting into my margin now. Okay, and ignition. Uh, we're a little bit crashy there. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, two days and six hours is too soon. You should aim for about three days to get to the moon. You can do longer than that, but really, any shorter than three days is bad. Just giving myself a hard time here. Uh, I don't know if hibernation is automatically on with this uh, probe right now. Okay, hibernation warp auto, I'm gonna say. There we go. That'll make things easier. Okay, to the moon. Okay, ignition. Let me just get the gear down now. So if we take a look at our surface speed, we'll see that we basically have about 400 to 500 to work with beyond the surface velocity. If your delta-v remaining is less than the surface velocity, you cannot land. <laughs> I hope that's obvious. You will not land safely without some litho-breaking, a lot of litho-breaking being necessary. We're so low right now that I think I'm just going to go straight into the landing. The best thing is if you're low. The problem of coming straight in is it's tough because you're coming in from a higher altitude and it's tough to judge things. but. Uh, if we keep going like this, maybe we can hit this crater? Probably we'll go too far, but at least we'll still be in daylight, I think. I feel like my moon, moon textures aren't quite right, though. Hmm. Then again, I'm used to a very particular install of Realism Overhaul's RSS Visual Enhancements. Well, Real Solar System's RSS Visual Enhancements, so maybe it's... Not familiar with it looking quite this way. I sort of like this crater in the middle of a crater with a lot of other craters in the middle. Maybe that's good. So one tool you can use to try and do a targeted landing is... I really shouldn't be doing a targeted landing with the amount of delta V we have. Is pick a target on the map using landing guidance and then click the spot that you want. And then show landing predictions. You don't have to let it land for you. But at least this will give you a reference. And of course give yourself some lead here. This is actually a pretty good spot. Uh, I think that would leave it in daylight for the optimal amount of time. You want to sort of land 
right when the location is starting to get into daylight so that the probe can operate with the solar panels for the longest amount of time. So of course we're a little bit too far north compared to the spot I plotted but that doesn't matter too much because we didn't really care about that spot in particular anyway. So I sort of split the difference here half-half. And then right now instead of retrograde we should use negative relative uh, negative surface relative velocity and if we're if our target difference is coming in too quickly we can pitch up here or you can shut off the engines for a little bit or engine in this case well, we're coming in a little bit too quickly here, so oh, I think I'll cut the engines briefly. We seem to be landing firmly within the crater, so that's okay. One other thing you can put on here, though it's not always super accurate, is the suicide burn countdown. Uh, because it's not super accurate, it's under miscellaneous instead of surface info. and. So, Suicide Burn Countdown is there. Actually, going into that spot would be really fancy. It's that one over there. So, there's the infinite ignition engines and there's the ones that throttle. The ones that throttle probably don't have an infinite ignition, so you're going to have to just throttle down and try to make the landing. But with the infinite ignitions, we just shut it off, turn it on, and do that repeatedly because we can't throttle. Throttling will be preferable, but so when the suicide burn countdown gets too high, I'll shut it off, and then the closer and closer we get, the less I let the suicide burn countdown go. So I'm on kill rotation now. I have to manually control it, but it wobbles quite a lot sometimes. I'm gonna try and get it vertical because I always tip it over. important to try and get the surface horizontal speed into whoops uh, we've got too much thrust to weight ratio right now we could use the rcs thrusters to limit the surface horizontal speed though uh, but getting into double digits of me, uh, millimeters per second is good uh, but i'm definitely not uh no i did not that's just the suspension on the landing gear though okay well this gives me some time to try and use the rcs to stop oh boy I think I should use the main engine to kill the horizontal speed here. The engine is too powerful, no! Oh, just land. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I wanted it to tilt over. Okay, that was, that. that's just... That's just the game being mean right there. Can we all agree that's just the game mean? Okay. Okay. I see how it is. All right. Anyway, uh, maybe find some way to reduce the suspension or something on these landing legs. Uh, clearly for this little probe, they're a little bit OP. Oh no, wrong way. Oh, it's still hopped. Okay, it was about to do it right, and then it hopped. That's just mean. Damper strength. N none of that. N none of uh, maybe the damper strength is good, though. Okay. Okay. Uh... Okay, don't suddenly hop now. Okay, success. All right. So, finally... Uh, our crisis is averted. Um, during time warp, it will recharge. You might want some science on it. But there you have it. That's landing a probe on the moon after designing a rocket in realism overhaul. About as simple as I can make it, uh, given the current state of realism overhaul. And with a minimal number of mods in the install. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.